Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Untitled Reviews. This being a show where it's about dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the series premiere of Ordinary Joe. A great series premiere. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. I think this is such an interesting timing because even at one point, you know, like it's like, yeah, you can't, no matter what path you take in life, you will always, there will always be a part of you wondering, what if I'm like, uh, because the moment he paused, I was like, is he going to say what I think? And he said, what if I was like, dude, uh, if you're unaware, just because maybe you're like, oh, you're, it's not your thing or anything, but like, uh, the show, what if, you know, Marvel and Disney plus, uh, I think that's so fascinating, the timing, but like I said, going into this already new, like the concept of like, yeah, it's such a fascinating show of like, right. Like this is a one person's life and just how three different, cho- like these three different choices led to three different, very different outcomes while also, leading to so many similarities especially because like these aren't like oh man this is like all your life at this point it's like no these are like parallel timelines of just like what his life is because they're literally on the same day because uh, the reunion's happening on the same day and everything but it's just like different to see where his life went you know oh like the girl you happen to bump into amy uh what was the most recent thing i saw her in i want to say it was the crossing i want to say is the most recent thing prior to that was uh ap was that it yeah yeah but i've seen her like pop up in a multitude of things um was it like natalie martinez i believe her name is um uh, also uh i didn't realize this until i looked it up the other day um was it i'm gonna butcher her last name is it like elizabeth lolly um she played beck in uh you and i was like i didn't know she was in this because also uh the actor who plays his friend eric played gabe in you so it's like oh two like you alumni to a certain extent and i'm like oh that's that's fascinating uh but regardless it's like a chance meeting with amy and that's one path and if you decide to go down that route but then like uh you know um jenny who's his best friend which they are more than friends because we find out later on, like, oh, they hooked up from time to time. But then also, it's like, right, my family, where my uh, Uncle Frank wants me to become a cop like my dad. And he kind of wants to follow in his dad's footsteps. And just, like, the different paths. Like, you know, choosing to go out with Amy led to him becoming, like, this really renowned uh, musician. He has a great life. Um, he gets paid pretty well. We see at one point he has, like, a ton of cars around him. Um but it is fascinating, like, you know, like I said, like, the, the connection, the connective tissue between the different lives, because, um, Amy is connected to that councilman who's running for, uh, can we never actually, did we ever find out, like, what they, how they're, like, connected, like, are they related, or just, I guess it's just, like, she was part of his, like, that's her job, just working on his campaign, I guess that's what, because at first I was like, are they related, but it's like, no, they're not, but it's just interesting, like, only in two lanes of the reality are they connected. So, like, they're connected in the reality that he's a uh, musician as well as the one where uh, he's a cop, but not necessarily in the one where he's a um, a, uh, a doctor because she's married to Eric in that timeline. So that's like, once again, it's just like, it's not just Joe's life. It is interesting to see like how much of a ripple effect this has had on people around him. Because like in one, I want to say the one where he's a musician, Eric's like divorced with a child. Whereas the one where he's um, a cop, uh, Eric's got a baby on the way, you know, and it's like, who's that with? It's not with Amy. So like maybe the same person he's with in the uh, musician universe, or at least was with, who's, you know, the the ex-wife is who he's currently with and the cop like life once again that's going to get so confusing bouncing between so many different like specifying like which realities i could like add like letters to like them but that's just going to be confusing so I'm, i'll label them by the profession he he's doing in said timelines and stuff but like i i, I think it does such a good job of showing like you know it is that i mean and i think that's supposed to be the whole kind of message behind this being kind of like the grass is always greener. Like, you know, you know, we're always focusing on like, yeah, like this is what my life is. But like, what if my life was something else where it's like, you know, and I think it's such a cool thing of like, no, just because like, yeah, no life is without complications. There's no such thing as a perfect life. It's like, yeah, like none of it, like, it's not like, oh, one life is better than the other. Like every life he's leaving, leading, whether it's his life as a cop, as a nurse, as a, um, 
as a like famous musician, like they all come with their own complications. In the musician life, him and Amy are trying to have kids, and it just seems like it never like works out. The fact is, they wanted like they were practically like we, we got introduced to at this uh, stage is like they were uh, going to have twins, which she's like, don't even tell your mom. I don't want to jinx it, but sadly, it didn't work out. Um, and she was he was even going to name one of the kids Chris after his father, which obviously we find out in the other well. We know in the universe where he's a uh, in the timeline where he's a um, a doctor or a nurse or whatever. Um, uh, he has a son named Chris, like you know, named after his father. So that's how that worked out. But um, Amy's to the point like she's always starting to think like, right, maybe we don't, we're not meant to have kids or anything like that. Because uh, that's well, oh, let, let me finish my thought. And so. She almost thinks it does it because, like, it's just every time it happens, like, you get your hopes up just to have it kind of ripped away from you every time. And obviously, she wants to kind of, like, you know, um, go into politics and stuff like that. What's I don't know whether he was running for because he was running for office, I guess, like mayor and stuff like that. I don't you know. So um, Bobby backs out. Uh, interestingly enough, played by uh, Alex Arricas. I was like, oh, snap. Um but he backed out and he wants Amy to kind of take over. So, um, Amy, it's, you know, this is what she wants, but it would mean putting, like, having kids on pause. And she's like, maybe we're not meant to have kids. And are you potentially okay with that? Like, are, am us being together, is that enough? And he doesn't really answer. She's like, oh, well, she kind of got her answer. And that's the complicated thing of because for him, it's like, I want to be a father. Like, I've always wanted, you know, maybe it's because maybe on some level he wants to be there for it. Just because sadly, like, you know, because we find out like his, his uh, dad died in the towers. So for him, it's like maybe on some level, it's like my dad wasn't able to be there for like a lot of my life. Uh, so I, at the very least, want to, like, you know, you know, almost, like, fill that void a little bit to an, a certain extent by having a child of my own. I mean, that's a conversation. We don't know if they've had this conversation, but, like, adoption's always an angle. But it is a thing of, like, you know, it's like, yeah, but, you know, is it... Because I think for him, it's like, right, I'd rather the child be, like... Not saying... I think there's something to, like, wanting a child to actually be yours, like, which isn't to say any child that's adopted isn't yours, but I think there's something maybe in Joe's brain, and like I said, this might be the conversation they have, but I think on some level, it's like, I want the child to actually be mine and carry on, like, our genes, it'd be like carrying on the family, you know, like, more specifically in that regard, like, I want the child to be, like, biologically mine, like, which, you know, maybe that's some, like, some programming like deep in just uh, the human genetic genetics genetic code of just the structuring of like our biology wanting that maybe there's something to that but it's interesting but uh the thing i was about to bring up is like bobby didn't get shot in this universe like so either like so maybe we'll find out why because obviously in the uh, universe where joe's a cop i keep saying universe but you know parallel life where he's a cop uh, they're investigating, like, why that guy had an issue with him. So, like, because obviously he gets shot in the nursing one as well. But obviously, like, he's not a cop, so he's not investigating that. But maybe his Uncle Frank potentially is in that universe. But, keep doing that. But, and so, what was different in that one that he didn't get shot potentially? Or maybe he did, but, because it, it didn't come up. Because the issue that comes up about Bobby is, like, he has, like, early onset Parkinson's and that's why he wants to kind of like back down uh but he's kind of trying to back out currently so I think that's interesting um uh, obviously like I was focusing on like the musician life that he has and um obviously it seems like his uncle Frank isn't as like yeah 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 about it um as he isn't, you know, specifically the cop life seems to be the one he's the happiest about. The nurse, uh, the nursing life, I don't, we didn't get to really interact with his, uh, his uh, uncle and his aunt in that continuity, so we we don't know. But because even like Eric and his uncle Frank's relationship, like obviously is like, oh, in the cop uh, reality, it's like, oh, like hey, like they're busting each other's balls type of thing, and it just seems like they still have that, but it's like they're not around each other enough, maybe. Uh, it, it's still there, but it doesn't seem like it's in same like, oh, friendly, uh, ball busting that it is in the cop. Yeah, you know, 
Because I think maybe he softened up a little bit because it's like, yeah, my uh, my nephew's a cop like I wanted him to be. But it, you can tell he didn't seem too happy about um, Joe going down the path of music. Maybe because he, he was there at the beginning performance, which I think it is kind of a nice detail that um, he has his dad's badge um, like on like his guitar strap, which I thought was kind of interesting. But, um, yeah, like, focusing on the, uh, nursing, um, life. Um, he's got some complications because he's away from home. Obviously, his son's medical condition, um, it's kind of like he ends up bringing it up later on. That's why he kind of took the night shifts and stuff like that to make more money so that he could take, you know, pay for, like, his health care and stuff like that. But that's a complicated thing because it's like, oh, like, when you marry your best friend and things don't work out, it's like you kind of lose your best friend. Like, that doesn't just apply to marriage. That just applies to relationships in general. Like, getting with your best friend, especially considering the fact is they were getting together, too. That just complicates things. But, like, Jenny's kind of, like, they're in a, uh, they're separated, like, kind of testing, uh, like, uh, separation test and just kind of seeing how things are. And for her, she wants a divorce. And it's like, yeah, everything's going to be amicable and stuff like that. But basically, it's, like, irrecoverably uh, broken. He's like, wait, are you saying that's what we are? She's like, that's what you just say legally when there is no, um, no one's at fault here. And But he's like, is that what we are? Are we irrecoverably uh, broken? Yes, I'm struggling to say that word. Uh, just one of those words I think I have a hard time saying, but, you know, he wants to, like, because, like, he didn't realize things were so far gone between them because he thought, like, oh, like, I thought, yeah, like, it came up earlier, like, yeah, we'll test out the separation, and then I thought we were doing good, but she's like, no, like, we don't even talk anymore, you don't tell me how you feel, like, he's bottling a lot of stuff up, and he didn't end up, you know, even his son, you know, uh, later on, when it came to like, the reunion and stuff, was like, "Oh, you're dressing nice. Like, is mom going to be there?" He's like, "Yeah." Like, he basically was like, "I hope you can win her back," because for him, it's like, because he's a smart kid and he's just like, uh, "Does this mean that you and mom, you know, are kind of like dumb with your, like your separation test that you know you'll both be here?" And he's like, "Yeah, I, I don't know." He's like, "Right." Like he. Uh, we hope to be or something like that. He's like, right, that's what parents say when uh, they're not quite sure what to say or like don't want to give you a certain answer or something. And it's like, yeah, because Joe himself doesn't really know where things are going to go between him and Jenny. So his, um, but it's like, yeah, your like career has kind of gotten in like the way of your relationship. But it's also like in that particular universe, it's like I'm unhappy with my life, but he never confided in Jenny about that. That it's just like, he just, because he felt bad being like, he felt bad about feeling bad about, like, what my life is and what it's become, like, maybe that could eventually lead to them going to, like, couples therapy and counseling, or maybe he could just go to therapy in general, because maybe there's so, a lot of underlying issues, like, like I said, like, we didn't really get a peek into, like, we ran into his mom in that, that reality, but not his Uncle Frank, so maybe there's some dissonance there, it's, you know, the regrets of, like, once again, the path not chosen, is, like, maybe there's some part of him that's, like, maybe I should have taken uh, my Uncle like Frank Zolfer and you know become a cop because maybe that maybe that's led to some contention in their relationship you know um like maybe there will be crossover because like I said Bobby did get sh shot in that universe as well so maybe his uncle Frank might be investigating it and then maybe he'd be like hey like let me um let me ask you about like what you were able to find in, in that regard but uh there's that uh which like I said, in that universe, Amy and Eric are together, and they're doing everything they can to, like... It is interesting, because it's like, yeah, because Eric's the one that's like, yo, get uh, Amy's number, but then it's like, oh, like, he ends up getting with Amy in that one, but he doesn't in any other reality. Not in um, the cop reality, nor the uh, musician reality, so... find that so fascinating. But, um... The fact is that they are together and they're both wanting things to work between Jenny uh, playing. You know, it's like, right, we're going to work together to, like, fix your marriage and stuff like that. You know, uh, when it comes to like the, the nursing um, reality. So but then you have uh, the cop reality where he's kind of getting all this praise for being a hero and stuff like that. You know, kind of uh, there with uh, uh, Bobby as he kind of does his thing of like, no, like because uh, for you know, Joe, it's like, I'm not the hero my father was. Like, him and many other people are actual heroes from going to the tower. I just I just did what I was trained to do. But Bobby is like, no, but you're my hero regardless. But uh, 
his mom's pressuring him because it's like, oh, he's single and it's around this time, you're in your 30s, you need to be starting a family, getting married. And it's like, you know, Eric's like, oh, you know, Jenny's coming to the reunion and oh, doesn't look like she's bringing a plus one, which his mom is like, oh, like kind of jump on that immediately. You know, Eric's pushing for it. Uh, his aunt and uncle are pushing for it. It's like, oh, we were 28 when we got married and had your cousin and uh, his mom's pushing for it. So in that in that particular world, I think it's kind of like his career is kind of also taken a little precedence precedence as well because I think like maybe the same thing could apply to musician world, but we haven't seen that really be an issue because I think that comes with its own like and once again like every aspect and every career he's kind of chosen in, across these three different lives has like their ups and downs like probably like when it comes to like. Because it seems like in his nursing job, it seemed like it was just kind of like going with the flow of things. And he kind of comes to resent it. Well, obviously, he loves his musician life because I think there's a lot of freedom with it. And then, like, being a cop comes with its own personal baggage of, like, you know, it's like carrying on my father's legacy, having his father's badge, you know, trying to do his father proud. It's more so. But it's also like, right, you kind of put your personal life on hold. So he ends up meeting Amy through the, uh, the like files on like Bobby and stuff like that, trying to find out like who would want to hurt him. So he ends up running into Amy. He's like, "Oh yeah, we're like we like we met uh, graduation day and stuff like that." It's like, "Cool, cool, cool." So uh, yeah, let's uh, like, would you if you go to reunion? I'll go to the reunion. So they do and having a fun time. And then uh, interestingly enough, in the nursing reality, he's dancing with um, Jenny there, and then he's hanging out with Amy there and kind of dancing with her. So it's just. It, the uh, interesting one for ones uh, because he was he was performing um, in the musician reality because Eric kind of convinced him to do so. Um, it's fascinating because like that room was like mega set up for him to put on a, a performance and stuff like. Well, because I think Eric's the one that kind of set that up. Because uh, like. Because I, I thought he was kind of implementing, like, in the uh, musician world, like, he was saying, like, Eric was like, oh, I, I set this whole thing up for the purpose of you to put on your performance here. I don't think that's where he puts on the performance. Maybe it is, but regardless. But obviously, it's just, like, set up just for people to hang out in the other two realities. And in the nursing reality, he's repairing things with Jenny. Granted, uh, it's like, she's like, you know this is kind of a nice first step, but he was like, I got 40 days. She's like, you got 38. He's like, well, I got 38 days to kind of change your mind that, you know, we, we can move forward. Like he can be a little bit more open, probably like deciding like what changes he's going to make in his life to make himself happier, you know, which isn't always a hundred percent like a choice. Like, you know, I mean, maybe it is just like his life being what it is. It makes him unhappy, but maybe there's something more deeper psychological or, or more on a mental front. Like who knows? But, um, other than that, like, we do have the other realities of him being a cop and him being a musician. He runs into Jenny, and obviously, like, he, in the musician reality, he's talking to Jenny about the fact is that him and Amy are fighting about having kids, and Jenny drops a bomb on him of, like, right, the thing I wanted to talk to you about all those years ago is I was pregnant, um, but she gave up that child for adoption, um, so because... You know, it's like, okay, because like, that information was never uh, told to us in the nursing reality of like, yeah, they have a kid that you thought that was later on, like after they got together, like it's like, no, like she was already pregnant uh, after gra at gra graduation. It's just he never showed up in either reality to know. So in this reality, he does know because it's like, wow, like, you know, I have a son out there. I'm going to meet him. And it's just, you know, he, he actually now is like, I am a father, so... You know, that's going to be an interesting and uh, I'm sure complicated conversation with Amy. But, you know, what I mean, because it's also like that's that's going to be a complicated thing, too. Cause it's like in general, a kid you didn't know about, but also like a kid that's grown up a, a, a good chunk without ever knowing you. Because it's like, right, he was mo maybe he was adopted into a good family, hopefully. And so you're trying to be in his life. And will that be? easy you know, there's there's a lot of contributing factors because also like you know will Jenny decide to try and be in his life as well because she says she tried to live life not looking backwards which is interesting because I think a lot of this is looking backwards in certain regards because like oh what if I made these different choices like each respective version of him is probably thinking that and then there's also the one that uh, the police reality where he's hanging out with Amy 
Uh, and he runs into Ginny and she's like, oh, here's, I'm here with my son. Was it Lucas? And it's like, right. She probably, because he was with Amy she, and she's probably like looking at it, it's like, like, right. I don't want to throw this, um, on you. Like, cause she went to the uh, reunion because she didn't know, like she was going to run into, um, him, uh, because at least in the, I think what changed things in the musician reality is cause she knew he was going to be there or maybe hearing that song or Maybe it's a combination knowing he was going to be there, plus hearing the song, plus hearing him talk about the fact that he wants to be a father, but, you know, things, you know, sadly aren't working, you know, with, between him and Amy in that, you know, in that regard. And then, um, so maybe all those were contributing factors that made her go like, all right, I'm going to tell you this secret I've been keeping for the past 10 years. Whereas the other one, it's like, right, like, I don't want to spring this on you, like... You know, I'm, I don't want to come out of the blue and be like, right, you have a son you just haven't known about for 10 years. You're here on a date with someone like so that's definitely going to be interesting where it's like there's the reality he knows. And now there's another one where you're like he's met Luke. He's met quote unquote Lucas slash Chris. But it's like you're completely unaware that he's your son. And it's like I'm wondering when that information is going to get dropped on him in that reality. He's a cop. So but also being a, like. Out of any job he has, that's the most dangerous one. But, you know, maybe they'll play with that. Like, in the sense of, like, a cop, like, that life, things could go sideways at any point in time. Like, you're, it's a weird metaphor to make and kind of a messed up metaphor to make. But your ticket could get punched at any point in time. But I think maybe they'll play with that where it's, like, a situation where it's, like, yeah, there's always, gonna, no matter what aspect of life, no matter what path you choose, there's always a possibility of things kind of going wrong. You know, whether it's his nursing life or his musician life, you, you know, death's kind of around in every corner. And I'm curious, like, how they play with that. Will it be a situation where it's like, oh, he almost dies this particular day as a cop, but like, oh, here are these other two realities on that same day. Like, is something, like, something else going to happen in those respective realities that, that um, equate to that same thing of like, oh, almost near death? Or is it just going to be like a, oh, like, here's two realities where he almost dies and here's the one where he doesn't, you know, once again, just the ups and downs. But I also think it's so interesting that uh, it's not just about a what if, you know, it's a question at the end of the day, what's next? And I, I'm really excited to continue watching the show. I, I think it's such an interesting concept. It reminds me of the show What If, but I, I think I've talked, I've talked about the show in the past. There's a show with Jason Isaac from a couple years ago called Awake. Basically, it's kind of like a supernatural-ish show. Basically, he uh, there was a, he had an accident with his family, like he had a, a wife and uh, son. Basically, his life split into two different realities. He'll go to sleep and wake up in another one. So basically, in one reality, his son died, but his wife is alive. And uh, he goes to sleep and wakes up in the other reality where... Um, it's, it's the opposite because I'm actually blinking on what I just said just now. But one one's alive in one reality and the other one is alive in the other. Like it's interesting how that works. And basically he uses that what he's learned in those realities to like to solve crimes because he's aware of it. Like this show isn't going to go down that awake route of like, oh, I'm aware of these different realities. I don't think it's just kind of a story of like, yeah, look at just the three different lives and how similar things will be, how different they will be. But even when they're different, like how certain aspects will still weave their way back into your life because notice like all three like stories it was hailing um it was all the same time and like i said the same people managed to find their way into his life you know whether it's jenny or whether it's amy and stuff like that it's, it's fascinating like i said it's gonna be interesting too to see just how different other people lives have been affected by his choices like the ripple effects you know but it's kind of interesting to know just like obviously someone else's life would obviously impact your life in certain regards especially if they're the close-knit people that they are whether it's his family whether it's a significant other you know whether it's jenny and like one of those cases, whether it's, you know, Amy and one. and Because obviously, like, he's meeting up with both Amy and Ginny in his cop life the same night again. Like, reconnecting with both of them. So, I'm sure that's going to be its own complication. You know, because every other reality, it's like, oh, like, like uh, the um, nurse reality, he's with Ginny. And the uh, musician reality, he's with Amy. So, just, uh, like I said, just a really interesting concept of the show. And I'm uh, very excited to see uh, where the next episode takes us with all of this but uh really that's all i want to talk about until the next time we meet be happy be safe low light to the fullest and enjoy it good day and goodbye